Hello and welcome to another Mr Carter Science Special. Don't forget to support the channel by liking and subscribing. In this video we're going to be looking at the cell structure of animal and plant cells. Don't forget to keep your eye on the specifications so you know where you are in your syllabus. By the end of this video you should be able to name all the parts of plant and animal cells and describe the functions of each of those parts. So we need to consider the makeup of multicellular organisms like animals and plants. The entire organism will be made up of organ systems, organs and getting smaller tissues and eventually the cell. You need to be aware of the definitions of those key terms. The cell is the basic unit of life. A tissue is a group of similar cells with a similar function, for example, muscle tissue. And an organ is a group of tissues with similar functions, for example, liver tissue, heart tissue, eyes, kidneys, etc. An organ system is a group of similar organs with a similar function. And here you can see the digestive system all working together, all those different organs working together to help digest food. And an entire organism will be made up of a group of organ systems working together with a similar function. And this is also true in plants. Plants are also made up of organs, organs like the leaves, the roots, the stem and flowers. But when we look at the cells, there are a number of similarities between animal cells and plant cells. Both animal cells and plant cells are eukaryotic. That means they have a nucleus. Both animal and plant cells have a cell membrane. Both animal and plant cells have cytoplasm. And within that cytoplasm, both animal and plant cells have ribosomes. Although those ribosomes may be found on structures like this, which are called endoplasmic reticulum, or they could be found more freely dotted about the cell on their own. And plant and animal cells also have a structure known as mitochondria. So that is um, five areas, five parts of a cell found in both plants and animals cells. However, plant cells also have a number of um, parts or organelles as they're known, um, which are unique to plant cells. Plant cells have chloroplasts, large vacuoles, and a cellulose cell wall. But what is the function of each of those parts of the cell? Well, the parts that are common to both animal and plant cells, the nucleus, cell membranes, cytoplasm, ribosomes, and mitochondria, the functions are listed down here. The nucleus controls the functions of the cell, the jobs of the cell, and it contains DNA in the form of chromosomes. Now, a short section of that DNA is called a gene, and that's a code to decide which proteins are made. Some of those proteins will be enzymes which control the chemical reactions happening in the cytoplasm and therefore controlling what gets made by the cell and what the cell does. So the nucleus controls the function of a cell. The cell membrane controls the substances that enter and leave the cell. So the cell membrane can hold certain substances inside the cell for use or it can allow certain substances to diffuse out or diffuse into the cell. The cytoplasm is the liquid part of the cell and it's the site of many of the different chemical reactions that are happening within the cell. In particular, one chemical reaction that happens in cells is protein synthesis, and that will happen at the ribosomes. And as we said before, ribosomes may be individual little dots within the cell, or they may be attached to larger structures like this, known as endoplasmic reticulum. You'll learn more about that at A level. And finally, small mitochondria, which have a structure that looks a little bit like this. You see it looking a lot like that on a diagram, a sort of a sausage shape with some lines in the middle. Those are mitochondria. And mitochondria are the site of aerobic respiration. And that's a very important chemical reaction. And I've listed it here where you take glucose and oxygen and they are joined together to form carbon dioxide and water. And energy is released. And that energy is trapped and carried around the cell in a molecule called ATP. 
It's an incredibly important, if not the most important, chemical reaction happening within cells. So both plant and animal cells contain those five organelles. Plant cells contain three unique organelles that animal cells do not have. Plant cells contain a chloroplast, a large vacuole and a cell wall. And you can see them here. The chloroplasts are the green structures. The large vacuole is the central area of the cell within the cytoplasm. And the cell wall is always surrounding the cell membrane. So if I show you the cell membrane here, and it's got a sort of a red colour on this diagram, and I'm colouring that in black now, you can then see the green cell wall on the outside. Now at this point, it might be helpful to show you how to draw a plant cell. So when you're drawing a plant cell, typically the type of plant cell you see here is a palisade cell. It's useful to draw the cell wall first as a single line, followed by the cell membrane, then draw a dark shape for the nucleus, and finally draw your vacuole. Within that cell, you will need to have some green blobs, which are the chloroplasts. You will need to have a few dots of ribosomes for the protein synthesis, and you'll need a few smaller dots with that sausage shape we mentioned before with the little lines inside the mitochondria, which are the site of respiration. But what's the function of these three parts of a cell, the chloroplast, large vacuole, and a cell wall? What do you need to say for your exams? Well, the chloroplast contains a green pigment called chlorophyll. A pigment is any chemical that has a colour. So this particular chlorophyll has a green colour, hence it's a green pigment. And the job of the chlorophyll is to absorb light energy so that photosynthesis can happen. In fact, the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. And again, this is an incredibly important chemical reaction that takes place in plant cells. So I've listed the reaction down here. Carbon dioxide is joined with water and we need some light energy to allow that to happen. And that has to happen through uh, the chlorophyll molecules within the chloroplast. So the carbon dioxide and the water molecules are joined together to form a glucose molecule and some waste oxygen gas. The function of the large vacuole is that it stores cell sap and sugars. And the function of a cell wall is that it provides strength to the cell. One of the key aspects that you need to be aware of is that in plants, the cell wall is made out of cellulose, and this is a different chemical to the chemicals that make up the cell wall of prokaryotic bacteria cells or eukaryotic fungi cells, which are made, have cell walls made of chitin, or chitin as it's spelt. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video on the structure of animal and plant cells. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below and let me know what you've learned. Thank you very much for your time.